All right, everybody, today I'm making a coffee table. So if you want to see how to turn this, So the first thing I'm going to do is get my workstation set up with my miter saw and I'm going to cut. These are one by four by 96 boards or eight feet, however you want to look at it. Got these at Home Depot. I think they're $5.72 a piece. This is the common pine. Uh, I wasn't too worried about it being too terribly straight. I tried to find the straightest ones naturally, but I'm going to cut these down into 13 and 3 quarter inch sections and I think I need 42 of those. i got to check my notes. I've already planned all this out. But that's what I'm going to do now is start cutting out my sections, 13 and 3 quarters. So in order to make sure that all of my boards are exactly the same length, you've seen what, I, what I've done here. I've kind of clamped everything in using this clamp. And then I'm going to bring the saw down without cutting and just see that it's going to cut the board to the exact same length. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and snug this down a bit and go ahead and cut it. And I'm also going to support this side with my other hand. So you've got all 42 of your pieces cut. The next thing you want to do is take eight of those pieces, cut them at a 45 degree angle. To do that, I'm using my table saw set at a 45 degree angle. And what I did was I just kind of measured up right here and laid it down until I saw I was just barely cutting at the corner, right where the corner meets the, the board. So you want to do eight of these. So what I've done here is I've laid out all of my boards. I'm going to use 14 pieces on the long side and seven pieces on the short side. So that would be five regular boards and two with the angles there, and then 12 with the regular boards, two with the angles here. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to figure out what size brad nailer I should use. I'm gonna go ahead and use inch and a quarter, or I should say brad nails. This is about, I think it's an inch and a half thick, so we're gonna do an inch and a quarter nail in there. I'm going to use a piece of one by two to kind of string all these pieces together. And as you can see, I'm using a level to make sure everything's flush. And I'm also using a square to make sure that everything's squaring up. You don't want this stuff to be cocked one side to the other. I went ahead and measured from the angle cut to the angle cut on the other side. We're at 47 and a half. My plan is to use a two by two right here in the middle. Um, so I'm going to need an inch and a half on either side. That way I can kind of butt that up into the corner and have something to grab into. So you can see my total length here is 47 and a half. I'm going to use a two by two, which actually measures inch and a half by inch and a half to kind of stuff up in the corner here. So I have something to put the corners together with. So I need to set this back an inch and a half on either side. So if I'm at 47 and a half, got a minus an inch and a half, that's 46 minus inch and a half. That's 44 and a half. That's how long I want to cut my stringers that I'm going to string the top and bottom with. So 44 and a half, I'm going to go ahead and just drop it to 44 and a quarter just to give myself a little bit of extra wiggle room there. So 44 and a quarter, that will give me, I'll just kind of slid it down a little bit so I can see how much I've got. That looks like it'll work. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this two pieces, 44 and a quarter. So now, once you're certain you've got everything square and flush, laid out the way you want it, take a little bit of wood glue, run a bead along right where you're going to put down your stringer. So 
set this further into position. All right over top of the wood glue. And then come back along with your one and a quarter inch brad nailer and nail everything down. And if you feel it shift like I just did, go on back through and make sure everything's still in position. And you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. If there's any extra glue kind of seeping out, which it probably will be, just kind of take your finger or wipe it off and then wipe it onto a uh, paper towel. When you're all done with the nailing up process, you should have something that resembles this. It should be one sideboard for your coffee table. So now I've done all the same things over here, squared it up, lined everything up, measured out my distance, made sure I gave enough room for my two by two that's gonna go in the corner. I've come up with a measurement of 19 and a half over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these two pieces as well. As you can see, I've already got these two pieces assembled. So we're getting there, people. Okay, so now what I'm gonna work on is getting my sides together. And you can see what I've done. I've cut some two by twos. And actually, I'm gonna admit that I made a mistake here. I was supposed to cut these boards at 13.75. I accidentally cut them all at 15.75. And it's a little bit late for me to correct that at this point, now that I've got them all nailed together. If I would have caught that before nailing everything up, it wouldn't be that big of a problem. And I could still technically put another piece of board there and then rip this off on my table saw, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. I mean, it's just gonna make the table two inches taller. But when I was measuring to see how long I needed these to be, I realized that it had 1575. So big mistake there. But what I'm gonna do now, moving forward, I'm not gonna focus too much on the past. Not much I can do to change it, except what I just said. Anyways, you can see what I've done is taken some clamps, Clamp this so it's going to be nice and tight right here. And what I'm going to do is just put a couple nails, um, just kind of securing these boards to this, flip it over and do the same thing, making sure everything's nice and square using my square. So after assembling that corner the other way I just showed you, I've decided that this is actually a better way to do it to make sure that you get this centered. So what you want to do here is make sure you get this right on the corner. Put some wood glue there, clamp it down, make, it, make sure it's all the way right on the corner, all the way up. And then go ahead and hit a couple two inch brad nails right in here. Actually over nailed it quite a bit. I just stuck a whole bunch of nails in there, make sure everything was uh, in there. Nice and secure, everything was looking good. Make sure you also have a couple extra nails right on this board here because what happens is this board is going to want to pull out if it only has one or two nails in it. So put like three or four nails in there. And uh, go ahead and continue assembling your side pieces. So to go ahead and finish up this box, I'm not able to flip anything over. So I held off on nailing the one side. I just put a few nails right here. I'm going to nail this side after I can flip it over and put clamps on that side. But obviously it's a U-shaped box right now, so I can't really flip it without it pulling on the corners too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, attach this side over here, put all the nails on the top part, flip it over, 
clamp everything down, put the nails on the bottom part. Kind of tricky, I know, but if you know a better way to do it, please put it in the comments. All right then, so after some brad nailing and gluing, you've got something that looks like this. So the next step that I'm gonna do, and you can see this is a little bit wobbly at the moment, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut my, uh, we've got a piece of plywood over there in the corner. I'm gonna cut that to go on the bottom. That's gonna serve as my bottom piece. Once I put that on there, this thing's gonna be nice and solid. And then we'll be ready to start working on the top from there. So all I'm gonna do for that is just measure my width by my height, or my length by my width, rather, and uh, go ahead and cut a piece of plywood to fit on the bottom. So now I've got myself a bottom that fits on there uh, really nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this, go back to my inch and a quarter brad nails, and nail this thing on there. Use a little bit of wood glue as well. So at this point, you have something that should resemble something of a box, kind of like a shipping crate almost. This is what I've got. I'm gonna go ahead and start making the lid for it. So at this point, this is how I'm gonna start making my lid. Um, what I did was I went ahead and measured the length and the width of the uh, box that I have built right now. And I went ahead and added an inch to that. So I would have a half inch overhang on each side all the way around, essentially. So I've got a 50 inch board right down the middle, all the way across. These boards here are 11 inches, the ones that kind of come out from the sides from the board, and then the ones that run between this are uh, 21.75 is the measurement. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Craig jig, I'm going to get some pocket holes going here and uh, get this all put together, make sure I use my wood clamps and all that, make sure everything is nice and flush, and then the boards are going to lay nice and flat as I uh, assemble this top. All right, now in order to get a good seat with your correct tool, you wanna to make sure that you've got everything lined up right where you need it with your marks, your measurements on your board, and uh, put some clamps on both sides, make sure everything stays nice and level. This is very important because your tabletop is not gonna be level if you don't get this stuff. This is the foundation for your tabletop, so you gotta make sure it's nice and level. Otherwise, the table won't be level. If I can figure out how to open my screws here, I'll go ahead and show you how to put the screws in. This is pretty straightforward. You just put a screw on your driver and drive it in there. Nothing fancy. As I said, the most important thing, though, is to make sure that you've got your clamps in place and it's holding everything together. I actually think I'm going to take this back apart and put a little wood glue in there, too, because I want to make sure everything... So 
So after a bit of work with your correct tool, this is what you've got. You've got a nice little frame for your herringbone pattern to sit in. That's what kind of pattern I'm gonna put. So I'm gonna run. So I've got that all built up. Now I'm gonna use some common pine. What I'm gonna do is run a strip down the middle here and a strip down the middle here, just to kind of break up my herringbone pattern a little bit. And since I'm gonna be using common pine for the herringbone pattern itself, I'm gonna use common pine pine for those strips as well because I'm going to be staining the top and when I stain it I want a nice consistent stain. So let's go ahead and cut those pieces to go across there and I think what I'm going to do is cut it at kind of like a point in the middle just to give it a little bit a little bit something extra in the design. I think it's going to look a little bit better that way. So I went ahead and marked the very center of the uh, tabletop. Went ahead and cut out a little arrow point. Marked off where it needed to be cut on the side. Now I'm going to head and glue and uh, brad nail it into place using my one and a quarter inch brad nails. So I got a little carried away there for a moment, but just wanted to stop and show you the progress I'm having. I went ahead and got these four points in the middle here, and I've got a couple of the chevrons coming out for my pattern, and I think it's looking pretty good. I don't know about you, but I'm liking it. So basically all I'm doing is I, I cut a 45 degree angle on one of the boards, and then I come over here and just kind of mark where it needs to be cut, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Uh, but I am making sure that I'm getting this nice and flush because I'm going to come and put a trim piece around the edge. It's going to look pretty good. It's already getting there. So check it out after a couple of hours you should have something that looks like this I really am digging the way this is coming out so the last thing I'm gonna do is just take and run a little strip around the edge and for that I'm just gonna use a one by two I think I got the select pine for that just because I wanted the finished edge to be a little stronger the common boards like this are a little bit softer wood so hopefully that doesn't affect the staining too much but yeah, this is what we've got at this point. Looking like a pretty good little lid going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that decorative trim around the edge. So once I have my two 45 degree angles cut, I'm gonna go ahead and run a bit of glue around here, use some clamps to hold everything in place, and brad nail it into place using my uh, inch and a quarter brad nails. So once you've got your next piece cut out, you're going to do the same thing. Just put a little glue on it, use some clamps to hold it in place, brad nail it in into position.
this is what I now have for my tabletop. Just gonna give it a good little sanding now. I'm not sure what grit sandpaper this is. Maybe it says it on the back. Let's check it out. And 120, 120 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with that random orbital sander. There is a little bit of, it's not too bad, but like for example, right here, I don't know if you can see it in the video, we do have a little bit of a step up there. So I'm just gonna try to level this out a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about it too much because I do want it to be like a rustic style table, so I'm not gonna sand it all the way down, but just as we're using it as a table, I don't wanna have too much of an edge anywhere for when people are putting drinks down on it. So let's go ahead and sand this thing up. After sanding, this is what we're looking at. I think we're looking pretty good at this point. I'm digging it. I'm gonna go ahead and sand the uh, main portion of the coffee table next. So the next thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of stain on this. Just got a little bit of Minwax stain here. Dark Walnut is a color I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna put on a rubber glove, take a piece of old t-shirt, and go ahead and just wipe this down, giving it a nice color. All right, so the next thing we're about to work on is attaching the wheels to the bottom here. I've taken my wheels and a pencil and marked where they need to go. I'm just offsetting it off a little bit each side. I don't know, maybe like, not a quarter of an inch, maybe like an eighth of an inch or something like that. And uh, actually I like this. This position better, it was a little crooked the other way. But basically I just marked it. I'm gonna pre-drill the holes slightly. So what I'm using here is a number 10 by three quarters screw. So here we go, something not too deep because I don't want it to go through my three quarter inch plywood here. And then what I'm gonna do is find the appropriate sized drill bit, which you want it to just be about the same, same diameter as the shaft of the screw but you want to leave some wood to be able for the threads to go into. 
So you don't want it to split the wood by just screwing in. You'd probably be okay, especially at this depth. But just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna pre-drill a little bit. So I'm gonna take my drill bit <clears throat> and I'm gonna see how far down I need to drill it, which is right about there. And then what I'm gonna do is just put a little piece of tape on my drill bit so I don't drill too deep. So here we go, just put a little tape on the drill bit. So now you know how deep to go with it. <laughs> now you just take your screws and install your wheel. And there we go, wheel is installed. So after attaching the wheels, you've got something that looks like this, looking pretty good if I must say. And I've got my top over here as well, that's looking good too, look at that. I've got my hinge assembly over there in the corner. So really, all I'm gonna do at this point is put some decorative trim along the top and the bottom. I went ahead and grabbed some one by three inch boards by 96 the other day while I was out. I'm just going to run one of those across the top, one across the bottom. Now you could get fancy here and kind of put a board through the middle and then do the diagonal board like that to give it like a farmhouse look or whatever. You can take this as far as you want to take it or you could just leave the sides the way they are and paint it. It's totally up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, just run a one by three across the top, one around the bottom, paint it up, put my hinge in position. I am going to have to figure out how I'm going to mount the hinge. It looks like this hinge mounts from the bottom. Let me take a look at it over here. Looks like it mounts from the bottom, so I'm gonna have to put a board that's gonna lay kind of like this, where this can bolt to. And it only came with two bolts per side, so that kind of stinks. You can buy more if you like. But I'll just put one in the front, one in the back, and then I use screws to hold it up onto the top. So that means I will have to run some boards this way that to mount to from the underside. But I think what I'm gonna do is cut just like a little square of material, fix that to the side here, and then have the other piece of wood just kind of sit on top of that and use a screw on either side to hold it in position. That way, if I need to get to that hinge or whatever and work on it and remove it, I can just remove it all in one piece by taking out the four screws. So that's gonna be my plan. Uh, but I'm gonna start with the trim, go ahead and get that done. So the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is assemble this hinge that I got from Amazon. This is gonna allow the lid of the coffee table to just kind of come up and back. It's spring-loaded, so you can have stuff sitting on the coffee table while it's uh, coming up and you can access whatever you're storing inside of it. So this thing did not come with instructions, but I kind of just laid it out. Um, obviously the springs are gonna go here from one hook to the other. You're gonna to have to stretch those on. Um, the other thing you're going to do is take these bolts that come with it and put it through these holes here so that this torsion bar will allow both sides of the hinge to operate at the same angle at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this thing and get it put together.
So when looking at the reviews for Amazon, loading the springs onto it was one of the largest complaints. Obviously there are no instructions. People didn't know how to go about this. So what I did was I have this assembled. So it gives me a little bit more leverage to work on. And uh, I went ahead and put it in the open position because that's the position in which the distance between the two posts is the shortest. So that means you don't, don't have to pull the spring as hard to get it to put in position. Then I went ahead and clamped it onto a pair of vice grips just like this. Now you want the fatter part of the spring to be going towards the inside so it's not sticking out past the side of the, spring, the uh, hinge. If you put it the other way, uh, it sticks out a little bit more. So I wanted to put it inside like this so that um, it was more out of the way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put down the camera just on the side. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. It's actually not too terribly difficult. Okay, I think you guys can see right there. So all I'm gonna do is step on this side here, go ahead and hook the spring into the one post, just pull it up, put it on the other post, and then release your vice grips. Not too terribly difficult. Okay, so I've set my hinge into position and I've measured the distance between this corner here and this corner here, allowing enough room, the hinge to be able to move. It's gonna be 19 inches, is how far apart this needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is measure the inside distance between these two inner pieces here, subtract 19 inches and divide by two, and that will tell me how far across this needs to be. Um, and that will be measuring from the inside edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that math, make some marks, put my uh, hinge up to it, make sure the math works out before I go ahead and mounting my little pieces. So I went ahead and cut little squares from the um, one by two that I had, the uh, select pine, and I'm going to go ahead and mount those to the side right here just using a little wood glue and some nails, and then I'll be able to screw the other piece right on top where it's gonna uh, be held in position. That way, if I need to pull everything out and work on it, I can do that. I don't know why I would ever have to do that, but I'm just kind of planning for the future to make sure it is able to be worked on. Okay, so I've taken all my measurements, sized everything up, everything's gonna fit just right. I've gone ahead and cut my cross boards here. I've got those at 21 and a half, and as you can see, they fit perfectly. They just kind of fit right in there without anything holding them. I've got these cut out and the distance from this edge to this edge is 13 and a half. So what I'm gonna do now is use a little bit of wood glue and put these into position. But I'm also gonna have these in position as well because I've noticed that the thickness of the, uh, the select pine is a little different than the common board. So I'm going to use wood clamps to kind of hold everything in position, but I want the upper surface to be more flush than the lower surface. I notice there's a little bit of overhang on the bottom side. Now I'm going to use a little wood glue, my nail gun, put a nail here and a nail here. I want to avoid the center part because that's where I'm going to run my screw to hold this in position when everything is in there. So what I've done now is I found some screws to hold this all in with and I'm going to go ahead and drill some pilot holes through the top and bottom and then I'm going to take a larger drill bit and drill through this top piece of wood just so that um, this can go through there without risk of splitting the wood at all. And from here, it's just a matter of driving the screw in so it holds it in position. 
I want this to be held in position before I start trying to mess around with the spring because I don't want this thing flopping around and having a spring all over the place. I want the spring to be secure. So I'm going to do this on all four holes. So I've got this bolted in position. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and drill a couple of holes to mount this hinge to. I'm going to use this hole and this hole. I was only provided two bolts in the kit, so that's what I'm going to use. But it looks like this needs to be a half inch over from this edge. I measured that on both sides, and it's a half inch on both. And then I want this to be about an inch and a half this way. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those holes, drill them out. And then I'll measure the distance from here to here so I can put the other hole there as well and go ahead and mount this spring.